When someone says turbocharger, a few things come to mind. A lot of people think of the Saab 900 Turbo as the first turbocharged production vehicle. But turbos have a much older history, especially in the United States. Engines with turbochargers were fitted to planes like the B-24 Liberator and the P-38 Lightning. You know, they all started, it all started from the, uh, you know, the World War II era because the pilots got, you know, super high altitude and were running out of power. So they were, you know, they were trying to come up with ways of supercharging, cramming air into the cylinders of those airplanes to get sea level performance while they're, you know, 15, you know, thousand feet, you know, above sea level. The turbocharger was invented by Swiss engineer Alfred Butchie. Butchie received a patent in 1905 for using an air compressor driven by exhaust gases that would force air into an engine to increase its power. Butchie proposed the first prototype of a turbocharged diesel engine for commercial development in 1915, but his ideas were given little consideration then. In 1925, Butchie redemonstrated the advantages of turbocharging by achieving a horsepower increase of more than 40%. This is what led to the eventual implementation of heavy-duty turbo diesel engines in the industry. The first turbocharged passenger car was a 1962 Oldsmobile Jetfire, which had a turbocharged 3.5-liter all-aluminum V8. Also in 1962, Chevrolet introduced a special run of turbocharged Corvairs called the Monza Spider, which were made from 1962 to 1966. They had a turbocharged flat six. So how exactly does a turbo work? Well, we went down to MoFab and interviewed their owner to get an in-depth explanation from a professional. So, uh, I'm Scott Molitor. I'm the owner of MoFab LLC here in Denver. Um, we, we are an up-garage. Uh, what an up-garage is, is a place that takes your car, uh, whether it be um, your full-on track car, your daily driver cruiser, um, or your uh, mom's minivan that you borrow for the weekend, and we make it a little bit better. So a turbocharger is basically like a device that harnesses otherwise wasted energy that would normally just go out the exhaust. So exhaust gases enter the, enter the turbine housing, hit the turbine wheel, okay? Spins the turbine wheel up. There's a shaft running through the unit and then it goes through on that same shaft to the compressor side. So you got the spent gases going in they spin the shaft. After they spin the shaft up, they leave and go out the exhaust or in some cases another turbocharger. Um, but when they spin that shaft, there is a relationship between this turbine side and the compressor side. The compressor side spins up, compresses the incoming air from an air box, another turbo, um, what have you, and this forces it into the engine. So you're taking, you're taking wasted energy, harnessing that wasted energy and turning it into uh, compression that forces that air into the engine and allows it to uh, make more horsepower and torque. And that enormous surge of jet fire power. As the custom modification industry grew, turbocharging became really popular. Uh, it would have to be in the late 80s, early 90s is when that, you know, like when they started bringing over uh, the Galant VR4 and uh, Subaru had the Legacy, stuff like that, you know, when people started modifying Hondas and stuff, um, you know, those there's companies that already had turbochargers on their vehicles already, the guys that didn't wanted to see what they could do with them, so they started, you know, bolting them on, you know, fabricating exhaust manifolds to put them on, um, coming up with ways to try to control the ignition so they could kind of dial back some of that timing so they wouldn't just blow them up right away. And there was a lot of trial and error, but I mean, it, it basically took something that would normally run a 16 second quarter mile uh, or 18 second quarter mile and you could, you know, immediately throw it down into, you know, the low 13s. Turbochargers are constantly evolving with the experimentation of Formula One and the manufacturers around the world. The turbocharger that was, you know, once limited to, you know, 400 horsepower that used to be on my car, I'm getting close to 600 horsepower on some of my customers' cars out of the same exact unit, just with different uh, blade design. It's just, it's, you know, it's such a vast, you know, vast uh, application that they can, they can really, uh, they can really spend some money on R&D and getting the stuff dialed in. It's pretty sweet. Awesome.